Right, okay. So, uh, I'm Peter Tribble. Um, most people who've been here for a while have seen me about. Um, that's my email. I'm going to be talking about um, a Solaris like distribution that I've put together, largely for my own amusement, but, uh, and how that works and how it's put together. And how that works is basically the same as most other open slice derived distributions like Solaris. So, quick bio. Um, I get paid to be a sysadmin. Um, not enough, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and sort of, uh, then of course I actually sort of go home in the evenings and sort of um, actually do some real fun stuff with computers. Yeah, sort of, uh, which I don't get paid for, but it's fun, so yeah, so it doesn't matter. Um, history. Um, I've been on the various Solaris beta programs for, for many years. I, I seem to recall logging so many bugs against Solaris 2.6 that sort of some sort of threw their arms up and said, you know, sort of, uh, well, look, here's Solaris 7 beta. Tell us about the bugs before the into production. So Solaris 7, all the updates, Solaris 8, all the updates, Solaris 9, Solaris 10, um, all the way through. Um, I was part of the Open Solaris project from day one, well, well, before day one, because there was actually a private closed project. And uh, for some reason, the uh, Open Solaris uh, members decided to vote me onto the board. Um, the following day, um, some got sold to Oracle. Everything sort of went rather pear shaped. But it was, it was fun while it lasted. Um, so, uh, it, let's say, there was Open Solaris, and then sort of that um, sort of came to a screeching halt um, as an open project. Um, so that went away. The Open Solaris or Solaris Core code was still open, uh, and that transitioned to the Illumos project. Um, and there were various sort of other distro distributions out there. I mean, Open Indiana from um, around here, uh, for instance. Continuing the open Solaris legacy. Um, and so after a while, I decided I'd build my own. Um, the first problem, of course, is, uh, yeah, you, in fact, this is always a problem with the project. Yeah, so what do you call it? Well, um, back in 2008, I think it was 2008, I think I've got my years right here, um, there was the Open Solaris Summit um, in Santa Cruz. And yeah, so this was in the days where sort of, yeah, sort of some would sort of fly large numbers of people out at their expense. Um, you know, sort, of, uh, sort of came out of San Francisco Airport, sort of uh, expecting a taxi, and sort of this sort of uh, huge white stretch limo sort of rolls up instead. Apparently, they don't have anything to do with them during the day. Yeah, so they sort of uh, they rent them out at sort of for, for next to nothing. Uh, unfortunately, the bar wasn't stopped. But, sort of, Reasonably pleasant trip down to Santa Cruz. Um, they had something called the Go-Go, which is one of these sort of um, team-building exercises. <coughs> uh, um, we had one the following year in um, San Francisco. Um, I think Joy might have taken part in that one as well. Um, but, uh, so, and then you have various challenges. You know, sort of you've got to solve various puzzles, do various things, prove you've done it, ask various questions. Um, got a bunch of middle-aged men chasing Batgirl around the beach. Um, that's Team International, and uh, yeah, there's me, there's, there's Shri, who's actually one of the leads for Bellinex. Um, Glyn Foster grinning manically in the background, who's one of the leads for Open Science. Um, and I say, one of the interesting questions that we had on this, this go game um, was, was this. Which of the following is not an open slice distribution? Now, this is 2008, and obviously, sort of, uh, we were there to sort of uh, launch the uh, launch the model. Uh, well, Shilix was actually a distribution that came out about 12 hours after Open Slice did. So, yeah, that one was uh, sort of Bellinix um, is actually the uh, the parent, if you like, of all of the Open Slice distributions and was responsible for most of the technologies that I'm going to talk about today. Um, basically, you got lifted by Sun without um, 
mentioning the fact that they actually came from somewhere else. Uh, Triblix, well, I'd never heard of the name, I'd never thought of it, but sort of I thought, right, I know what I'm going to use that name for. <laughs> um, it took me a little while, actually, to sort of get around to, uh, to producing a distribution after sort of this idea. Um, I was several years, really. Uh, So, so what is Trivix? Well, I say it's a distribution for me. It's what I would build and run on my machine. It's what I do build and run on my machine. Um, the word that uh, I like to use is, uh, is retro. Um, critics would call it old-fashioned, but it's retro. So it's very much a retro feel to it, but very much sort of modern. You know, sort of, I might run an old desktop, but I run the current version of it. Lightweight desktops, there's no GNOME, there's no sort of um, Unity, there's um, not all that stuff. Speed and simplicity, because I'm very much impatient. Um, I use an SVR4 packaging underneath. Um, anyone who doesn't know that I hate IPS with vengeance, or hasn't been around, um, which enables things like sparse root zones and all sorts of interesting things. And it helps with speed and simplicity. You know, so. Why did I? Build my own? Well, you have the distros out there, you really didn't see, you know, I asked for something. I wanted something different, um, completely, and I wanted to build, build it myself. There's also a thirst for knowledge here, yeah, sort of, uh, yeah, sort of like all the Raspberry Pi the day that they were announced, you know, so that sort of thing. Um, and it keeps me alert, you know, sort of, uh, if you're just a professional sysadmin all day, then sort of, yeah, sort of you pick the phone up, such and such, disk has failed, I can't lock it. You know, sort of server's gone down, you know, sort of, can we have another website? This sort of thing keeps me alert and it actually helps understand what's really going on inside the system, um, which can be useful sort of when sort of, everything goes pear shaped. Um, and I do like a little bit of sort of gloss on the desktop. It's something that's vanished from modern desktops, um, you know, sort of. Uh, Back in back in the 90s, yeah, so everything was you know, yeah, transparent windows, fancy backgrounds, colours, sort of dynamic. You don't get this anymore. You know, sort of like boring, dull things. Um, that's uh, Enlightenment E17, um, which I think I needed one patch to make it work. Um, they've gone broken <coughs> more recent versions. After that, I sort of started going through sort of uh, all the window managers. I, sort of back in, in the 90s, yeah, so a new window manager would come out every week, so that's sort of it's a trial one. Um, window maker, um, I actually ran window maker an awful lot um, at work um, because it's, it's very lightweight. Um, after that, anyone who remember AWM? This is the old Ardent window manager. It was the first truly modern window manager for, for X. The, the previous ones didn't have things like title bars and buttons and the like. AWM sort of did. It was a bit of a challenge to get that to, uh, to compile on something modern. Unfortunately, the code was especially small, it wasn't. TWM, TV DWM, the virtual desktop version. Pi W, I don't know what it came across Pi W there. See, it's sort of a normal window manager. Your window, your menus, are sort of like there's a title at the top and then a list of things underneath it. Well, so Pi WM puts a little circle like a pie chart. It was just an interesting thing to do. Uh, and a bunch of other window managers. Yeah, sort of, uh, I like to try these things out. You see, also, as a desktop, the, uh, the primary desktop that I use is XFCE, uh, which is sort of a sort of lightweight version of GNOME that actually works and doesn't get in the line, doesn't interfere and is very much quicker. So that's that's what I actually use. Again, sort of XFCE compiles zero patches. Um, it'll actually work on Solaris 10 if you install the um, relevant you know, update version of all the components like sort of GLib and GTK that it depends on. We actually maintain XFCE as a, as a first class, well, second class port, like sort of the BSDs, because there's all these things like the, sort of uh, 
in the open source world that have their hooks into sort of, uh, sort of Linux specific uh, projects like um, yeah, sort of systemd and udev and the like. Uh, so if you know what this works in And it's not just desktops, although clearly my first aim is to have a nice pretty desktop. There's overall server stuff that I'm working on as well. So, how, if once you decide to build a distribution, how do you go from sort of this idea to sort of producing something like this, you know, sort of a CD that you can hand out or an ISO that you can stick on a download site for people to get? Um, and it's quite a long, complicated process, and it sort of took me sort of several weeks of sort of tinkering around before I finally managed to work out exactly how all this put together. So if you shove that CD into the drive, um, this machine is one of the modern ones doesn't have a CD drive, so they just took a copy of it. Um, you look at what's on this ISO, or what's on the CD. Um, this is what it looks like on slice 11. Uh, and if you recognize some of the, you know, if you look at the root file system on, on a Unix system, you'll recognize some of these, yeah, sort of, uh, but, uh, you know, all the z lib files, what are they? Um, and yeah, there's things that you might recognise, but there's no user. Hmm, that's a bit odd. Um, so that's what slice 11 and most of the other open slice style strokes actually look like. Um, if you look at sort of the root of a trivix ISO, it looks like this. And um, there's only half a dozen things there, and it's much simpler. It turns out that. Everything else on the is just junk that nobody bothered to delete and sort of clean up after themselves. Um, so pretty much the rest of it is completely unnecessary. Um, doesn't take up a lot of space. They're just empty directories by and large, but it's just it's just a mess. Um, so what are these? So we've got the, the dot cattle file, dot vol set on the boot, reasonable packages, and that's triple and other things I know. Platform and then all these sort of Zlib files. Right, so let's go through these. So let's start with boot. Um, this is x86. We're using Grub. Uh, we're using legacy Grub, but you know, sort of slice 11 is going to Grub too. Um, so boot basically contains the various bits of Grub. Um, when you create the CD, uh, create the ISO, with OFS, you tell it this is what boot file on this image is. Um, the L3 tag. The only other thing that's interesting in there is the uh, this menu.list or in newer versions of the grub.cfg, which basically tells the system how to boot. And this is one of the entries in it. I, you know, so in most of these, there's various options about sort of turning on debug and enabling this. And, yeah, sort of sending the output to the terminal. Yeah, there's all that's all there as well. Um, but this is what it looks like, and that tells Grub where to get the kernel from and where to get the boot archive from, which is blah blah blah. blah. Okay, so that's the boot directory. This explains what the platform directory is. The platform directory contains the kernel, which is one of the entries that maybe got this. Um, some <coughs> distributions are still dual 32 or 64 bit, some of them pure 64 bit, um, some haven't. Um, so you can actually select whether to boot 32 or 64 uh, with this dot ICD, which automatically works out the sort of, sort of platform you have. Um, then there's this boot archive, which is basically it's a UFS file system in a file that's compressed. It gets pulled in my grub and mounted around this. Um, just a, a little aside, that's sort of how, if, if you do a regular system boot, um, so you've got an install system and you boot it, exactly the same thing happens. You load the kernel, you load a boot archive into memory as a round disk. Hand over, yeah, grub hands over control that it carries on. With a regular system, that Archive.